All right, so here goes one of the uh, plasma flame circuits I was playing around with a while ago. And I've been using these variable capacitors. I had a way bigger one, uh, but also got this one from somewhere. Seemed to work all right. Gave, you, gave me the uh, same range, much smaller package. As I've said before, they're great for tuning these. I feel like really ship that around to see what's going to happen. So I actually sourced finally a capacitor, a little RF ceramic capacitor for it now that i finally got a fixed value capacitor you know i always figured it would work better but you know i didn't think the difference would be that major but it it is a pretty big improvement uh but that's uh i think 75 picofarad i'm just gonna run it at uh 16 volts so it's going i'll draw a little flame out so it actually pulls quite a bit pulling like four and a half amps and uh it wants to settle on right about 13 megahertz that's sort of like the range I figured that value would be at, because that's what I measured off the variable cap. I wasn't able to actually get a uh, little flame like that at 16 volts before. Got a nice little field. But, you know, I can um, turn that down, turn the gate down, rather, to the point where it actually sort of gets rid of that little ring in there. And then... uh sort of cut it up from there so i'll just put it at 25 it's actually still current limiting a little bit so i'm just going to back it down to the point where it's not uh current limiting so again 13 megahertz now at 25 decent little flame so i'd say i needed a good deal more voltage before uh with this same setup using the variable cap and this seems like I can just sort of just keep playing with the uh, gate voltage and crank it up with this particular setup without really changing anything. And then it would still be decent, right? So that's kind of cool. Cut that off. Put it still back at 16 volts, even at that low voltage at about 13 megahertz. Have to do it just right thing likes to flip into some funny tuning but I can still draw out you know a little arc like that hot arc so you can see now it's shifted into lower frequency it's just interesting how that works I'll draw that out now we're back at the 13 megahertz which it's gonna more uh, typically run it the higher the output, higher the voltage. But so let's say uh, I hook a light bulb up. So I'll do something like this, right? Take this, uh, it's a 90 watt halogen. Just got a wire soldered on. Just gonna hook that to the high voltage node here. Then cut this back on. I'll have to cut it back up a little bit to get it going. So what's interesting is, um, you know, obviously if I touch the other terminal on there like that still got the flame going actually touch the other terminal 16 volts All right but again that's uh so that's like 50 watts whatever but it's going through the screwdriver capacitive coupled to my hand well, what's kind of interesting is let's say i take something like that but see what happens is let's say i hold it close I'm not actually touching the other terminal right now, right? And it's uh, powering that filament a little bit. And the closer I bring it, the brighter it gets. Alright, so I'm like real close to it now. If I start moving it away, I lose that coupling, right? So now it's only, you know, sort of like just barely staying lit. I can just use my hand, let's say. Bring my hand close, it gets a little brighter. Bring this close to it. See how it's picking up. Now let's touch it directly on it. And it goes out, right? So, still draw a little arc off there. But, uh, you know, let's say I use this instead. If I use that instead, then it lights right up, right?
But anyway, after playing around, uh, you know, set up like this for a while, that uh, little cap down here, I feel just like the slightest little warmth on it, right? And this connection was real weak also. It's just got a bootleg on there. But yeah, such a small little uh, cap like that seems to work pretty good. I don't know how it would hold up if I tried to push, you know, three, four hundred watts or more. I guess only one way to find out, maybe tune this a little better, see how it runs, maybe a little more, you know, like compact, just with that guy, instead of a big honking air cap, sort of the goal. I'm also probably eventually going to try these guys, so these are silicon RF capacitors, you can see that, I don't know why my uh, camera sucks, anyway, that's what they look like, these particular ones are... 3600 volt, 300 picofarad. So if I put two of those together, I have a nice little decent 100 picofarad capacitor for one of these. Also, wouldn't mind just seeing how it would work out using some fairly inexpensive little FKP capacitors like these guys. So these are 470, so put a bunch of those in a certain arrangement, you know, to get your value. I'm curious how that would work, 2000 volts each. I feel like it would probably work. It might get pretty damn hot, uh, depending on what they're doing, though. So I don't know if those are really going to work for such high frequencies, although, as far as I understand, something like these guys are rated for uh, microwave frequencies. Since I know these guys work out really good, though, that's pretty much a uh, probably a better way to go. But, again, that, that guy right there was like 25 bucks. We'll put it at... I'm going to keep bringing it up a little bit and then back in the uh, gate voltage down slightly. So I'm keeping under my, you know, like 4.9 limit. And I'm still at about 13 megahertz, pretty much on the dot. So, say I back that down a little bit more. Bring it up to like 35. 35. That's like uh, 150 watts or so. so. That's not bad. So that looks like with the glass, that'll actually be pretty good too. At only uh, 35. So yeah, I like how that cap works. But I'll have to run it, you know, see if it'll handle that. Yeah, it's not bad. Interesting how it's dead on. 13 megahertz a lot of times looks like but yeah again um, it's hard for me to kind of do a you know like a direct comparison or whatever but um let's just say I had the variable cap on there instead of this little guy which still you know just like the slightest little bit of heat I'd imagine it'll probably work out all right it just get real damn hot pushing crazy power yeah with the variable cap wasn't real easy for me to uh, tune around and get the output very nice. The size of it in general, I would say it was maybe the biggest factor, but yeah, something about these little guys right here, which is pretty awesome. So I should have properly had uh, both channels hooked up before. You know, my blue trace wasn't actually showing the uh, drain swing, so but there, so you see how hard it's switching that 13 megahertz. So that's like 20 volts, so Basically what's happening when I cut that gate voltage down is this right here. See how that's shifting? Now my draw has gone down. Output still there a little bit. So it starts switching a lot better, right? I've got a little variation there. So now if I cut the voltage up, let's say I put it at uh, 30 now. So I'll still get, you know, not too bad output. It's switching better than it would have. But yet again... I can cut that gate voltage down, but you see I brought it down to the point where now it went out of oscillation, right? You have a little bit of variation there, just adjusting that uh, voltage divider there to where it seems like you can make a little sacrifice. It's like, okay, cut it down a little bit if it's switching too hard, crank the voltage up, and uh, it's kind of decent. But that's just basically running it like that without trying to tune anything. I just threw that sucker on. What I thought was kind of interesting is even with that hard switching, I can run this thing for fairly long periods and I don't feel any heat 
accumulating on here. So for whatever reason, it's not getting stupid hot. Whereas where I was running it with the uh, variable capacitor, I would have to get it tuned almost perfectly to where it wasn't getting stupid hot. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how it goes. So anyway, uh, what, what I would want to do is, I don't know, maybe find a couple more of these guys and then go for like a more compact build, right?